FOMO. My name is Patrick J. McGinnis, and I'm a FOMO Sapiens. And since you're here, I'm going to bet that you are too. And when you're like us and Monday comes around, you don't dread the new week. No, you wake up every Monday morning knowing that this week might just be the best one yet. This is Faux Monday, the snackable show that starts your week right with hot takes, life hacks, listener mail, and even some FOMO therapy. Welcome to Faux Monday, the snackable companion show to FOMO Sapiens. I'm your host, Patrick J. McGinnis, venture capitalist by day, author and podcaster by night, and FOMO Sapiens 24-7. Happy Faux Monday, best day of the week. And this week on the show, on Thursday, I have a really cool guest, Juliet Funt. Now, Juliet wrote a book called A Minute to Think. And I've been using some of her tips, actually, in the last uh, couple weeks. And I have to say, you're going to like it because she she just kind of talks about how we can create space in our lives for more sort of productivity and creativity and all the things, sanity. It's always good to increase in a time when it feels just like everything's going 9,000 miles per hour right now. And so I'm actually trying to speak more slowly than usual because I'm all hepped up, but that's what we're going to talk about. And one thing that I found out about Juliet, we have been talking, actually, we've become friendly and she's, she's a really cool person. She has an amazing speaking career. And when she told me about her speaking career and the things that she does, I was, I mean, I had FOMO. I'm, I totally did because as somebody who's been building a speaking career over time, I was amazed. She's a master. And she's not the first great speaker we've had on the show. A couple uh, seasons ago, we had on a person called Ben Nemptin. Ben is the guy with the bucket list and he travels around talking about bucket lists and how to live a meaningful life. And people pay him real money. It's insane. And by the way, he's amazing at what he does. And so I talked to Ben about that. And so I've been learning, right? Because I do do speaking. In fact, you know, if you're interested, go to my website and you can find resources. You can find a, a, a kit you can download about my speaking and there's a tab and you can contact me. So if that's interesting. You know, I talk about decision-making and entrepreneurship and I've talked to companies like Google, the World Bank, Deutsche Bank, YPO chapters, embassies all over the world. I've done a bunch of this stuff and so I enjoy it. It's, it's pretty awesome. And during the, the old pandemic, I completely had to pivot to online, which was super interesting. And I talked to some Wall Street firms and it's just been a lot of learning on my part. But what I have learned is that it is hard to build a career in speaking. And so I just want to talk about that today. But before I get into sort of my advice, I do want to tell you what my trajectory has been because I've learned a ton on the way. You know, well, <laughs> this is how it works. So... When you want to be a speaker, the thing that happens is the beginning, you're just begging people to speak anywhere. You're like, oh, you're opening an envelope. Can I please speak at that? Or, oh, you have a panel on something. Can I please be on your panel? And you are just begging and begging. And that's okay because frankly, it's all learning. And you go on these panels, you give these talks and probably you're not very good or you're boring or maybe you're awesome. I certainly was not but you just get comfortable. And I had done speaking as a kid. I competed in speaking, but it's a whole different ball game. So that was really valuable experience just to learn sort of how to tailor a message for an audience in a way that would be interesting. And so, you know, in the beginning, that's what you do. And then what happens is if you get a little bit of traction, all of a sudden people want to have you speak at their events but they are not willing to pay you, but they'll fly you anywhere. It's kind of, it's kind of wild. So I got flown to all kinds of places in the world and did it for free. And I just did it to sort of build up a little bit of a, a CV as it were. And then I started saying no, because at some point you're like, as much as I'd like to go to someplace in Italy for the weekend, you know, I'm busy. I got stuff going on. It's a long way to go to not make any money. And yes, it'd be nice to stay at your hotel in the middle of wherever it was. I can't remember now. It was in the north of Italy somewhere. I was just sort of like, is this the metric that I'm trying to get to? Is my metric that I'm trying to measure, you know, how many trips I get? No, I wanted to make money. And so that's the third part is if you get to this place where you start to actually get paid. And by the way, that's where there's a lot of variability because, you know, you may make very little 
or you may make a ton of money. Professional speakers who really, really do well can make many tens of thousands for a two hour speech. And what is so crazy about it, by the way, this is the part that like kind of a mind blower is you will have somebody out there, some very famous person who wrote some amazing book 34 years ago, and they have been making the same speech for 34 years. Their PowerPoint is from 1992 and they are charging big amounts of money. And so that's just, that's kind of awesome. If you can get to that spot, it's a great, I think about it, you're getting paid to talk about your ideas and you get to meet really interesting people and hopefully do something good that changes the way they think. So that is the kind of place you want to go, but it's hard. FOMO. FOMO. So if you're thinking that you want to be a speaker, let's talk about how you can build a speaking career. I got six steps for you. Step number one, don't have FOMO. I'm telling you, I should take my own advice. Like when I talk to people like Ben and Juliet, I feel a lot of FOMO. I'll admit it because they're, it just seems like it's so easy for them. I know it's not. It takes time to build. And by the way, if I look at where I am vis-a-vis -vis five, six years ago, I've made a lot of progress, but I know what it took to, 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 to get to where I am today. And so I would just say, you know, we often talk about the notion of FOMO versus reality recognize that this is hard and it's slow because, you know, getting people to pay you a lot of money to talk about your ideas, it ain't easy, right? It's not. If it were, we'd all be doing it all day long. And so understanding that it's helpful because then you're not going to feel like you're just a failure all the time. We don't want that. Number two, uh, a lot of times people say, well, just get an agent. So yeah, I mean, that'd be nice. And by the way, if you're a speaking agent listening, Feel free to call me, but here's been my experience, and I'm not criticizing, I'm just saying what happened to me is, agents are great when you're a huge name and you have tons of demand, and then they can sort of manage your speaking career and maybe generate some additional stuff. But if you're just starting out in the business, they'll be sort of like, well, you know, I have uh, I have Adam Grant. What do I need you for? <laughs> that's, that's a good question. He's very good, right? And so it's sort of like, it's just a lot of work to, to break in somebody who's new and it's a lot easier for them to work with people who are more established. So it's just hard to get an agent. And so when people say, hey, just get an agent, I want to say, okay, fine. If you're an agent, I'll work with you. But otherwise, you know, I've tried this and so far I find it difficult. And in fact, a lot of people I know who are really successful, they do it all themselves. Number three, figure out your topic and be wise about it. And this is, again, from my own experience. It is very difficult to sell a speech about... 10% entrepreneurship, which is my first book, of course, convincing people they should do side projects while keeping their day job. Really hard to get companies to hire you to come in and do that. It is just, I mean, it's not pretty. And in fact, Google did it. I've spoken there a bunch of times and thank you, Google. But most companies are like, what? I'm going to hire some dude to come in and then tell my employees to start side projects. No, thank you. And so I, I get it. And that's... That's a little lesson I had. So I do still speak about that, but I do a lot more speaking on FOMO and decision-making and FOBO and all this sort of stuff that we talk about on this show. And companies are much more interested. It just works a lot better for the kind of thing that they're trying to share with their employees. So I get that. I respect that. And you know, I learned to pivot to something that people would find a little bit more relevant for their audience. Number four, you gotta be creative and innovative. So here I'm talking about the fact that great speakers do really interesting things. They make their speeches interactive. They use technology and video. They create moments of emotion. You know, it's not just having a, a nice PowerPoint, although I do have a nice PowerPoint, but you gotta have moments of interactivity, polling, maybe breakouts, getting people to ask questions, video, all kinds of stuff. There's a lot of, it's sort of like writing a play. And in fact, I work with somebody who helps me to make my speeches way more interesting because I know myself, I'm kind of professorial. And so, you know, I kind of end up lecturing and people are not as engaged as they should be. And so I've had to learn how to do that. And, you know, it's always a struggle, but it's something I work at. Number five, got to have collateral, great website, a speaker reel. I don't even have a speaker reel. I will say that I have some things, but you know, it's, I make hard to make a speaker reel the last two years when nobody did any events. So That'll be my little challenge for this year. But great speakers have video of them talking in front of 5,000 people and that kind of stuff. Clients want to see that. 
I did a big event this year, but it was on Zoom. So nobody wants to see that, <laughs> even though it came out really nice. It's just like, it's not as impactful as having a person in front of all these people kind of trotting around the stage and looking amazing. So having that stuff though, it really makes a difference. And you got to invest in that. that. That actually is an investment you got to make. And finally, number six, you need a funnel to create demand. So, you know, I think about my own work. Where do I get speaking from? Well, people who listen to this podcast, people who read my books, people who I know from life who run businesses or are senior executives. And you need to drive that kind of stuff. Also, you can use search engine optimization on Google that sends people to your website, but that's how it works. If I look at how my speeches come in, it's through the content I create or for the network I have. And so that's important. And so getting out there and talking to people and maybe writing a book or having a podcast or doing something else, that really helps to drive demand for your speaking talent. All right, so to recap, those six things were, don't have FOMO, it's hard. Number two, the agents, Hard to get them. <laughs> it's really hard to get them. Number three, choose your topic wisely. Number four, be innovative and creative. Number five, got to have the collateral website, speakers reel, all this stuff. And six, got to have that funnel. All right. I hope that's not too daunting. I feel daunted. I mean, I'm trying to do this and I'm now I'm tired. But I know that if you want to do it, just recognize it takes some time. But it can be really rewarding, really fun. And it's a great way to just spend your time. All right, FOMO Sapiens, we will be talking to Juliet this Thursday. She's amazing. Until then, take care of yourselves. FOMO. If you like today's show, please be sure to rate it and recommend it to your friends. And as always, you can find me on Instagram at Patrick J. McGinnis, on Twitter at PJ McGinnis, and on the web at FOMOSapiens.com or PatrickMcGinnis.com, where you can get all kinds of free resources to live a more decisive and entrepreneurial life. FOMO. Want more FOMO Sapiens info Monday? Head over to FOMOSapiens.com where you can listen to past episodes, learn more about the show, and find out how to advertise. You can also connect with me on Instagram at Patrick J. McGinnis and on Twitter at PJ McGinnis.